Okay, good. So, yes, thank you for being here. And, you know, I always like to, before we actually go into the vessel itself, I want to, you know, make sure that the edges are nice and clean and that the space is clear. So, you know, let's make it our collective intention to acknowledge that we're working to create a safe space here in this realm of subnature, right? We can't forget where we are, you know? And, and I found that when we, we use this uh, electronic medium that, that we really need to be, you know, acting from a, a fully awakened consciousness so that we can infuse the beings working in this realm with redemptive Christic impulses to serve the highest good for all. So, you know, let's just, with our thinking, just, you know, cleanse and consecrate the ethers with our goodwill. This is a collective thing that we can all do just by, by our, making it our intention. And yeah, I think to me, you know, the, these simple changes of consciousness really, you know, it really makes a difference. It, it does wonders. And, you know, and, and let's bring our gratitude. You know, we can thank these beings for, for doing their job to, to wake us up to our task of, of redeeming and, and transforming the web into, into an altar. So I always find that, that during these immersions into the sub realms that we, when we connect to the elements, you know, the spirit, beings behind nature, it really helps me to stay grounded and, and upright. So today, uh, you know, I have some little flowers around from our garden and um, I'm going to light a beeswax candle and, you know, I'm going to picture the tongues of fire warming my speech. Yeah, and I'm surrounded by stones and, and crystals, plants, uh, my dog Winifred's over here and my, my cat Lucy, she's probably out at the periphery. So yeah, let's remember that all the kingdoms are present when we make it our intention to, to invite them. And of course, all of you are here aligning with your higher self and with the beneficent beings working with humanity who are aligned with, with love and light and who will to strengthen and unite us in the art of social solidarity as we co-create a safe, sacred space for the, the wisdom of the Sophia to enter into with grace. So, yeah, can you feel the shift already? Yeah. Do uh, any of us here wanna add anything to our space before we Begin, you might want to say something, Lisa. Yes, thank you, Hazel Archer, and thank you for crafting this amazing text for us today. Um, as you're speaking of the elements around us, I invite each person to look around your own space, your physical space, which is maybe part of your everyday living space. But to imagine, well, maybe you see something that needs a little fixing, a little cleaning, something that needs a little organizing, something perhaps you wish was a little bit different than what it is, an adjustment you might make or thought, maybe someday I'd make. And just imagine that the way it is right now is perfect. It's the perfect sacred space, physical space for this experience to to travel through and uh, connect with us from and through all of this space that Hazel has cleared for us. And uh, so just adding that your physical space is now a sacred space, a sanctuary for us. And with that, I uh, am Lisa Dalton and uh, who has been speaking is Hazel Archer. And I'd like to pass it to Richard Cloud to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. I'm Richard Cloud. I'm in Fort Worth right now. It's a pleasure to be here and see everyone. Thank you for coming. And we have Zachariah. 
Good morning, Zachariah. I'm from Houston. And we have Alexander. Hi, Alexander, also known as Brother Michael. I'm in Manhattan, New York. And Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey Levy, and I'm sitting in Louisville, Kentucky. Welcome. We are so, so honored to have you here, and I'm going to pass it over to Hazel. Thank you so much. It, it really just feels like we we're already beginning to, to, to live into this sacredness that we all really have, this divine part in us. So I wanted to share uh, this, this verse that I love of Steiner's, which really reminds me of this idea of social solidarity. And it, and it, it goes like this. We come here to embrace what is common in each one of us, our love for a higher knowledge, which unites us in our understanding. Let this light of knowledge unite each and all of us, making rise in each the rising of the other. Yeah, I just I just love this image of, of embracing our, our common humanity, you know, uniting our understanding, right? You know, what is it that we understand? How can we bring the connections that that love and light can can shine on knowledge? And then that becomes wisdom, right? So then that can come in and then we have the wisdom to support and, and share with each other, each of us adding our, our spark to the spirit, right? Making rise in each the rising of the other. So, yeah, we have created our, our vessel. What mystery is unfolding in the heart fires we are holding in our hands we are molding the grail in our beholding. The song growl. The song growl, the chaste chalice. The song growl, the chaste chalice, the cauldron of Caridwen. The song growl, the chaste chalice, the cauldron of Caridwen, the Eucharist cup. The song growl. The chaste chalice, the cauldron of Curidon, the Eucharist cup, the jewel from the crown of Lucifer. The song growl, the chaste chalice, the cauldron of Caridwin, the Eucharist cup, the jewel from the crown of Lucifer, the goblet of Sophia. Song growl. The chaste chalice, the cauldron of Caridwin, the Eucharist, the jewel from the crown of Lucifer, the goblet of Sophia, the sacred vessel. The Holy Grail. An eternal fountain ever full. Overflowing. Receiving. Stirring. Pouring. Water into wine, blood into earth air into fire death into life the alchemical marriage uniting us all what mystery is unfolding in the heart fires we are holding in our hands we are molding the grail in our beholding the Holy Grail integrates the etherealized blood of the Christos with the feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit, which descends on Whit Sunday like tongues of fire. First to the heads of the disciples, penetrating them into their hearts. Opening the larynx along the way, enabling them to speak the language of the heart. The disciples baptized by fire become apostles. They are now able to put the secret teachings of the risen Christ out in the world. 
we are called to take it up in our work of building the temple of the heart. The alchemists of old called it the great work, the art of crafting the philosopher's stone or the lapis elixir. For the Rosicrucian, it was an inner alchemy of thinking through willing, united by love. We turn now to ancient times, to the Emerald Isle, where the ancient grail motif lived in the Celtic cauldron of the goddess Caridwen. Hear now the voice of Caridwen. Hear now the voice of Caridwen. Sprung from Danu, the goddess of the Proto-Celts, I am Caridwen. Sprung from Danu, the goddess of the Proto-Celts, I am Caridwen. Sprung from Danu, the goddess of the Proto-Celts, I am Caridwen. I am Caridwen. From my cauldron of knowledge and inspiration, connecting the heights, expanses, and depths, receiving the refrain of the fixed stars, the song, the song telling of the bard, and the mystic moan in the boughs of the underworld. Tis I who initiates the cycles of life from the womb to the tomb. If you are to find me, the quest begins before the wisdom word of the scriptures. And from the all, I came to be known as Sophia, the first creation of God, an emanation of the divine light. I am called co-creator and mediator between God and the world. I speak to you now from the threshold of the depths where I have watched my cauldron metamorphose. It stands now re-envisioned as the cup used by the Christos at the Last Supper. Held later under the cross, a sacred vessel for the spiritualized blood of this cosmic sun god. See, my cauldron has become the chalice of transubstantiation. The word. The Logos, linked with wisdom. The Sophia, the Sophia, becoming a practice of the Essenes, ready to be activated, renewed, and developed further. Christian mystic and alchemist Jacob Boehm tells us, the Sophia is the seeing as Holy Spirit, the mirror as Son, and the eye as Father. The noble Sophia hides herself in the fountain of Christ. The paradoxical nature of Sophia's chalice is that while it provides limitless nourishment, it is at the same time an empty vessel. For the grail is the receptive ground from which all nature arises, into which the divine pours itself. The grail contains all things, yet it is open, pure, and virginal. Gazing deeply into the grail, we live into its essential openness, experiencing the seeming void of deep space beyond time before creation or impermanence. Zum Ram wird hier der Zeit. Zum Ram wird hier der Zeit. Zum Ram wird hier der Zeit. Here, space becomes time. Space, time. Space, time. These polarities of existence are expressed in the many images of the grail. The primal cauldron of the goddess, which gives both life and death. 
the chalice of Christ's blood, which represents the suffering of Good Friday and the joy of Easter. The world soul experienced through that expansion into the heights of ascension, which then calls down the tongues of fire at Pentecost, bringing the Holy Spirit into our will. Friedrich Schiller, philosopher and friends to Goethe once said, take the divine into your will and it descends from its cosmic throne. Our modern grail quest must follow the pathways of the Sophia hidden in the chalice of Christ. The grail is the vessel of Sophia. The vessel of Sophia. The loss of the grail. The loss of the vessel. Is the dismemberment of Sophia. The loss of the soul of the world is the dismemberment of Isis Sophia. What mystery is unfolding in the hard times we are holding in our hands we are molding the grail of our Hear now the Whitson verse by Rudolf Steiner. There first, where sense can know no more, stands the portal, which discloses life reality to soul being. This portal's key the soul may fashion if she herself grows strong within the strife by world powers waged on their own ground with human forces. If of her own accord, she puts to flight the sleep, which at the frontier of her senses cloaks the forces of knowledge in spirit night. Every created thing is seated with the divine. Every created thing is seated with the divine. When we drink from her cup, we become aware of the sacredness of the natural world. When we drink from her cup, we become aware of the sacredness, the sacredness of the natural world. Hear now the Whitson verse by Rudolf Steiner. There first, where sense can know no more, stands the portal which discloses life reality to soul being. This portal's key the soul may fashion if she herself grows strong within the strife by world powers waged on their own ground with human forces. If of her own accord she puts to flight the sleep which at the frontier of her senses cloaks the forces of knowledge in spirit night. What mystery is unfolding in the heart fires we are holding in our hands we are molding the grail in our beholding. The sacrifice of Christ, taken up in wisdom, can heal the Fisher King. The wounded king, prominent in many of the Grail stories, symbolizes the lower desires of human nature without the balance of Christ Sophia. The sacred spear turned against the king and punished him for his impurity and weakness inflicting a wound that could not be healed. The dolorous stroke from the spear of Longinus. Leaving the king maimed, kept alive only by the power of the grail. After this, the holy grail and the sacred spear were hidden from human eyes, taken into 
keeping in the spiritual world. The fertility of the land linked to that of the Fisher King became a barren wasteland until the time when he could be healed by the question, which is especially potent today. What ails thee? The Arthurian spirit speaks. The Arthurian spirit. The spirit of King Arthur speaks. Heretofore, from my castle in the north, at the edge of the sea which the cliff divides in two, where wild waves rise and crash, and the elemental forces commingle, seeding the etheric with vitality, my knights of the round table gaze with eyes of spirit to observe the interplay between light and air, warmth and light. They communicated with spirit beings streaming to earth in the rays of the sun, mirrored too in the glittering raindrops and in the mossy rock. In seeing this, they were filled with a pagan piety, a surrender of intellect to the manifold spiritual beings working in nature. As king, I held the power of the sun at noontide. They, my twelve knights at the round table, were as constellations of the zodiac, working together to bring civilizing forces to Europe under the banner of the mighty Archangel Michael. For many a generation, we gathered at the time of Pentecost to complete the threefold movable feast of Easter. But when the cosmic intelligence fell from Michael into the hands of humanity, our task in that ancient form was complete. A more inward Christianity with a different gesture arose from a castle in the south. The cosmic intelligence, no longer drawn from the heavens and reflected through the elements, was now meant to be cultivated in the heart of the human being. Hear now the voice of the initiate who holds the title of Parzival. Hear now the voice of Parzival. Parzival speaks. Born from heart sorrow, and a brave knight I never knew. Raised in seclusion, I was the pure fool, unconscious of my true divine nature. My dullness of soul, combined with an unbridled will to action, made me rude and insensitive to the suffering or, or death of others. Wandering, lost, and unprepared, my horse led me to the Grail Castle in the south. Not having developed sufficient compassion, I neglected to ask my host, the Fisher King, about his mysterious wound or about the magical happenings in the castle. Unconsciously bound by the karma of my former life as the youth of Saïs, I was not able to think beyond the advice I was given to not be overly inquisitive, which had once been my downfall. The Akashic records show that in the time of ancient Egypt, I was too bold, lifting the veil of Isis, which was then forbidden. It cost me my life. At the Grail Castle, my failure to ask what ails thee cast me out. Confused, I rode off, meeting my cousin Sigun along the way, holding her beloved husband, Shyanat Tulander, under the tableau of the Pieta. Another recapitulation of those Egyptian times symbolizing the transformation of Isis and Horus into the Christian montage of Virgin and Son, the Madonna holding the secret of death and rebirth, showing how the spiritual is connected to the physical. Through this divine tableau, I came to realize that my true name is not pure fool, but perceive or pierce the veil. 
a sign that I must become the light that pierces the valley of the shadow of darkness through trial and tribulation. This is the search for the grail. Dirk Mietleid listened through compassion to knowing. To do the great work is to achieve initiation step by step. I came to this by taking the Christ path of discipline and catharsis. To be the Parzival is to actualize the Rosicrucian dictum. Ex Deo Nasimor. From the Godhead we are born. In Christo Morimor. In Christ, death becomes life. Per spiritum sanctum revavissimus. In the spirit's cosmic thoughts, the soul awakens. What mystery is unfolding in the heart fires we are holding. In our hands we are molding the grail of our beholding. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our reading. And now we are going to invite everyone to join us in um, coming into our breakout rooms. You know, and Lisa, just a sec. You know what? I was thinking while you set that up, mm -hmm. and you all know that we're going to now have a time to have a little social sculpture together. I wondered if anybody wanted to just uh, share any immediate impressions from these these grail words that have come forth for you. I hope that they've stimulated your heart a little bit and and maybe you're feeling that warmth that we've, we were trying to generate. So if anybody had anything to share with the larger group right now, that would be great while Lisa sets up the, the breakout rooms. May I? Please, yeah. Uh, for me, this is a, a, a great experience because I'm having a spiritual experience in my abode where I live, where I have everything together. And I read the script before, but by doing this with other people in their space and we're sharing a space and the room was opened up for us to have a space. And to feel a cleansing in my space and um, being who I'm able to be, you know, and this is, this is, these are the words and these are the experiences of my ancestors. And I'm looking forward to the breakout rooms and hearing what everybody else has to say. Maybe we could share, um, what we might talk about in the breakout rooms. Yes, so um, one of the questions uh, that came up is uh, the idea of, um, uh, maybe Richard was gonna pose that question. Did you wanna pose that question, Richard? Or I will, so yes. if, Okay, okay, go ahead, Richard. No, no, you go ahead. Okay, okay. So one question we had was, have you ever been inspired to ask what ails thee? And how did that work for you? Another, or, Hazel? Yeah, I mean, another way you could do it is like, you know, maybe you wanted to ask the sacred question, but you didn't do it, right? I, I That's my experience. Like there's been times where like, I could have been like, have compassion. I could have been like, "Hey, what's going on?" But it, but I didn't. So I missed the moment. So I think about that sometimes. I wonder if if anybody else has had that experience. 
And then a third question might be, how if each one of us is Parseval, how can we move from the um, fool level of the fool to the level of piercing the veil? Is there something we can think of for ourselves about how we can transform to to go from fool to piercing the veil? So these are thoughts, and you're actually welcome to chat with uh, a chat a, a, uh, on whatever topic you would like, and um, and and. I have a we set really, up. Yeah, we really just want to have each person make sure that they have like four minutes each to just speak. And then, then the, you know, then there could be like five minutes where everybody has like a conversation, but it can just unfold the way, the way it needs to. Right? You'll know. So uh, I have it set up. Bear with me if I, if I, uh, I'm just not locating where the timing is. I've got us all sorted into what I hope are fun rooms. How was it? It was great. <laughs> yeah, Maria joined us uh, from Chicago on her lunch break for a minute, and it was it was great seeing her. I saw her in Dallas last month, and uh, she just she just had a minute before, so it was it was real quick, but it was it was still just really concise and nice to to see everyone. Beautiful. Hey, Ted, how did it go? You want to unmute? Yeah, I, I thought it was amazing that uh, Maria jumped in on her lunch break uh, from Chicago to spend in her car to spend uh, 10 minutes with us. Uh, in I can't wrap my head around the idea that an individual um, hundreds of miles away from me, and then Zach is in Houston, that we can connect in this digital form, which is on one hand great, but on the other hand, uh, what are the implications of that? There's such interconnectedness electronically. There's kind of a separation because distance doesn't mean anything anymore in that sense. It, but it's two dimensional. It's not like we're two bodies in the same room. It's limited sensory contact. So there's a, I think the danger is to substitute the virtual for the embodied experience of breathing together, which is what the title of this session, breathe. breathe. So, and what I experience in, when you ask the question, um, what ails thee is I can breathe. Okay, so you're going to take me in. You're going to you're going to be an empath, and you're going to be uh, willing to challenge me, maybe, and um, to take seriously what I say. Uh, you know, a contrarian will uh, say, "Well, what do you mean? You know, did you think about this?" And then I can feel engaged with somebody who's challenging or with somebody who's saying, oh, I'm sympathetic with you. I agree with you. <laughs> somebody says, no, I disagree with you, but still I'm breathing. I'm engaged. Whether somebody is sympathetic or antipathetic, I'm engaged. I feel seen. And that's how I breathe when I feel empathetic resonance. Thank you. And Hazel had such a beautiful blog today on, on that, on breathing. So if anyone missed that, quite beautiful. Who else? Anyone like to share something? Oh, I, so, okay, so I'm... <laughs> Other thoughts? Any responses from our little breakouts? Oh, hey, so... I think it's, I, I, I do think it's wonderful that we do have Zooming. I'm not a Zoomer at all, and I'm becoming one again, you know, and that, you know, we, are, we aren't in the same the same space which is why i I'm, I'm big on when we can all get together that we can get together you know and i'm i'm very spoiled i live in new york city you know i'm a member of the anthroposophy nyc group um there are people you know that i can speak to there are various rosencrucian um centers you know that i can that i can be with but uh, having, you know, I know Richard and I know Zach and I know Hazel and I know Lisa and 
just by having that energy still with me. Uh, gives me peace and solace. That's all I have to say. Great. Val, you were going to say something? Uh, yeah, I was going to say I was so fortunate to actually have my first uh, experience with Hazel other than watching her on YouTube. <laughs> so it was wonderful. And I actually had my hopes fulfilled. So I came to this gathering on the recommendation of my wonderful teacher, Rosemary, and I said, you know what? I don't get Whitson. I don't, I don't get the Holy Spirit. I don't get Pentecost. I know about tongues and talking, but it doesn't mean anything to me. And she translated this into anthroposophy for me. And I could understand um, because I, al I always felt a sadness when Christ ascended and left. I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't right. <laughs> um, and so she said, it's not like he left, but he needed to bring the death experience into the etheric. And so he rose up and into the etheric plane, thus allowing the Holy Spirit to come down and work with us. And that explanation has really helped me not just intellectually but in my heart because I always felt that God was a little bit of a you know where'd you go kind of absent <laughs> well you know it's interesting you say that though Val because that's what Steiner actually describes that feeling of abandonment in his lectures on the fifth gospel he talks about how okay so the the disciples went through this experience of the death and then, oh my gosh, what's happening? And then, oh, there's this resurrection and then living into that. And then they receive these secret teachings during those 40 days up until ascension, you know, but they're still not quite awake in their awakened consciousness. They're still receiving these things. And then with this disappearance that happens at ascension, they're totally bereft. They're, they don't know what to do. So they all just gather up in the, in the upper room and they sit around and they pray and they just, you know, feel that loneliness. But they create this ecclesia, this, this vessel, this holy grail where they stay together with faith that something will come through. And that pays off because then 50 days after Easter, 10 days later, the Holy Spirit comes in. Right, that divine feminine aspect comes in that activates them then that they can really truly wake up and take all of that stuff that, that that's been pouring into them and take that out into the world. So it's a what you're feeling, I I feel it too every year, even though I know you know what, what what's going on, I still feel that 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 loneliness during that time. So you're right in tune. Who else has something they'd like to share? All right, shall we explore a little bit, speaking of the uh, arts, um, uh, which came up in, in my session uh, that I jumped in with uh, Rosemary and um, Brother Michael, Alexander, and Katya. Um, I'd like to invite us now to experience maybe a little imaginative embodiment of some of the images that have arisen. So to, uh, I welcome anyone who would like to, to stand up if you'd like, or lie down if you'd like. You can turn off your uh, images or keep them on. And, um, and I, uh, and I'm going to start actually in my chair, lean, just lounging, kind of leaning back. Uh, and then I may move up into a standing position during the process. So however you want to, or you can do this completely, or you can do it just with your hands, however you'd like to. <clears throat> to begin with, if we can imagine inside of you, 
<clears throat> is a kind of power of the Christ that in this heart centered area, uh, in this lotus, in, in ro this rose, this lotus, this heart centered area is this powerful Christ light, but it is hidden. It is dark and uh, it, it's, it's alive and fueled, but it is masked and hidden. And we could imagine ourselves <clears throat> sort of reclining in a primordial soup <clears throat> that we are in effect one, we experience a sense of oneness with the earthly forces, the earth, the dirt, the grounds, the elementals and we are in a primordial soup and yet there is this light that impulse that pulses in us and as it does we begin to feel from this expanded sense of oneness in the primordial soup we begin to feel the form of a physical body shaping itself as if from clay, our bodies being shaped, given form, legs and arms, a head, a spine, the rhythmic system begins to pulse, and yet we are we are in the ground, grounded, we are filled with the grounds of all potential. But in a kind of encasement without yet identity. And so we begin to move to sculpt ourselves as clay and give ourselves more form and more individuality. Maybe even you take your hands and you define that shape around your arms and legs. And it's still sort of down, but maybe you begin now to work your way up as you gather these forces down into your legs and the legs start to become the base, the base and it, it forms, gives more solidity. It starts to give yourself a, 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 the beginning of an uprightness, an impulse to start to bring as the legs form, the pelvis forms, the spine forms, and more power and the light inside begins to grow and define an etheric force to this mass of clay, and blood starts to pulse and breath starts to come in the pores and out the pores, and we start to grow upright, more from this horizontal position, we come into an uprightness, and as we come into this uprightness, we feel this solid form. We have solid base now. We have this long stem. And as we inhale, nice and strong, we send that radiant energy deep into the earth. And we draw up from the core of the earth the forces. And our arms begin to form a chalice, a goblet. And we begin to sense from that light in the center of our being, we begin to sense our star above us. A star above us begins to stream down, connecting with our inner light and filling the bowl of the goblet, of the chalice, of the grail with this streaming light. And as we inhale, receiving that light into us, and connecting it to our inner light and connecting it with the fiery Christ heart in the earth. We feel ourselves rising up and we meet and we receive in to our goblet the streaming wisdom and we give up to our cosmic forces, to our ancestors, to our spiritual hierarchies 
We feed back to them as we receive them, inhale, process it through our humanity and radiate it, transforming from the fool into the one who pierces the veil. As we release, we can retain this connection from the ground, connecting to the heart, connecting to the inspiration. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Now, what do you call that? There's a, a Michael Chekhov term for what you just gave us, isn't there? Well, it, I just took us through a, an imaginative psychological gesture of becoming the grail. Beautiful. We're embodying the grail. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so now our journey continues. Closer to this time now. Because Rudolf Steiner tells us in his philosophy of spiritual activity. Oh, Jeffrey, you you have to unmute, darling. Here we go. Only because human individuals are one in spirit can they also enjoy life side by side. The free person lives in confidence that the other free person belongs with them to a spiritual world and in their highest intentions will meet with them. In 1907, Rudolf Steiner created the Whitson Congress as a new Rosicrucian grail impulse, displaying the seven seals of St. John's Apocalypse, a representation of the seven stages of human evolution and of the Rosicrucian Christian initiation. You have to unmute, Brother Michael. To <clears throat> At the Switzerland Assembly, in connection with the Rose Cross Meditation, Steiner revealed. In the future, the larynx becomes a pure, chaste chalice, which when fructified by the spirit, is offered up to the holy lance of love. This union is the symbol of the Holy Grail in its highest ideal. This Whitson spirit came alive again through Rudolf Steiner for the third time in history and did so with the refounding of the Anthroposophical Society at the Christmas conference. The deed of laying the foundation stone of love into the hearts of those connected with the anthroposophical movement created what Steiner called a world Whitson. The renewing of wisdom, coupled with Steiner's deed of love and sacrifice, inaugurated the possibility for the human soul to transform into a chalice for anthroposophia. The nature of this quest and the powerful question, what ails thee, indicates that it continues in our time now. For the social realm, whether it's in person or on Zoom, is the stage of the new mysteries. The social realm is the stage of the new mysteries where we must have tolerance and take interest in the other, which leads to loving thy neighbor as thyself. The social realm is the altar of all the new mysteries. You're muted, Lisa. The quest to bring wholeness to the Christ impulse and the related quest to unveil the Sophia remain unfinished today. Both of these Pentecostal quests, which are really mirror images of the one quest, have been left for a modern age to contemplate. And to complete. And to complete, excuse me. So to do a group poem, um, I would ask that um, you each 
form your hands together in a cup. And in that cup, I want you to uh, picture something that you would give to someone else in the group. But I would ask that it not be an abstract thing like hope or love, or but something um, from the mineral, uh, plant, or uh, animal kingdoms. And also, if possible, not a general thing like a flower, but a specific um, flower or a specific item that you can imagine in your hands that you can pass off to someone else. And I think to make it easier because it's not, I can't, I'm not sure how we would move from person to person uh, that I will just ask you uh, as you form this to pass it on to the next person. So I will start um, and then I'll say who I'm passing it on to. Uh, a lovely uh, deep purple cosmos blossom that I will offer up to Lisa. <clears throat> and Lisa, if you would offer this to Zachariah. This blossom specifically? No, what, oh, my what own, you, yes. your, your own. Uh, Zachariah, I offer you this full blooming blue bonnet. And Zachariah to Ted. Ted, I invite you to share this glass of wine with me. I receive this glass of wine gratefully and I share with Hazel. And Leon. Hello. Yes. Uh, I share, I receive the glass of wine, gratefully from Zachariah, and I share a copper ball with Hazel. Thank you, I'm gonna warm it up in my hands. And then who am I gonna to pass to? Uh, Val. Val, I'm gonna to pass to you a seashell that came from the River Jordan that is shaped like an ear. And Val, if you could unmute and pass on to Alexander. Thank you for the seashell. Alexander, I pass on to you wonderful blueberries. <laughs> Alexander, pass on to Tom. Thank you for the blueberries, Val. To Tom, I pass a medallion of the tree of life. Tom, um, if you would pass on to Richard. Thank you, Alexander, for this medallion of the tree of life. And to Richard, I pass a bar of iron. Richard, if you would pass on to Greg. Thank you for the bar of iron. Tom, Greg, to you, I pass on a single snow white rose. Greg, if you would pass on to Carlene. Thank you, Richard. Where's Kylene? Oh, Carlene. To Carlene, I pass to you the flickering light of a candle lit in prayer and love. Arlene, if you would unmute and pass on to Rosemary. And, um, um, Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. To you, I give a blooming trillium flower from the forest. Unpicked. And Rosemary, if you would pass on to Micah and unmute. Thank you, Carlene, for the trillium. And I pass to Michael a glass of pure water. And 
Micah, I, if you would pass back to me something. Yeah, thank you for the pure water. And I pass on um, a rhombus, a crystal rhombus full of light to Jeffrey. Uh, thank you. And now um, I would ask that you imagine into your chalice, like in the Grail Castle, again, something from animal, mineral, or vegetable kingdoms, your heart's desire. And I think what I would like to have in my grail is a newborn chick. Yeah. And Lisa. Uh, I would like in my grail uh, a, a healthy dog. Zachariah? In my cup. I would like a sprouting avocado seed. To me? Uh, I, I have Ted next, if he unmutes. Okay. Um, in, in my grail, um, I would like warm water. Hazel? My grail is brimming with the power of forgiveness. And Val? Sorry, I haven't been able to think so fast off the cuff, so I'll have to come up with a, a singing bell. Tom? I would place in my grail an Apache Peter. Alexander. In my cup, I would place understanding. Richard? In my grail, I would have fresh, pure white snow. Greg? In my grail, I would ask for a mustard seed. Arlene? I would like a clear quartz crystal. Rosemary? Bread made from stone. And Micah? Um... We call it sea rose or lotus flower is in my grail. Hmm. There's also Cheryl and William Slavinsky. So would either of you like to unmute and share what's in your grail? Okay. Here comes Liv. Oh. Liv, did you want to Unmute and share what's in your grail. Go ahead, Jeffrey. So I think that that concludes. Um, I think if we were in person, we could have just gone around and I wouldn't have had to call names, but I thought it would ease things if I called names. Perfect. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, Jeffrey. I'm just curious now, is there anyone who has a few uh, last thoughts before we just wrap up our closing verse? If, uh, if anyone has any thoughts or responses to what we've shared or what you'd like to bring forward. We are so grateful that you have all joined us. And so uh, I think we shall go ahead and wrap up then. Closing Verse by Rudolf Steiner. To us is given at no stage ever to rest. We live and we strive. The active human being 
from life to life. As plants grow from springtime to springtime ever aloft. Through air, upward to truth. <laughs> Through fetters, upward to freedom. Through illness and death. Upward to beauty. To health and to life. Yay! Yay! Thank you. Thank you very much. I think it went well for a first time. That was not too bad. <laughs> so uh, we have Richard, and uh, this concludes our formal part of the program, but Richard is our Grandmaster of Mystica Eterna, Mystica Americana. Um, and if anyone has any questions about the uh, uh, the processes of Rudolf Steiner's uh, ritual work. Richard would be happy to answer any questions. As best I can. But... <laughs> Is anybody familiar with Steiner's ritual work? Have they heard of it? So I'm not. I went to your website and saw a bunch of symbols and official documents. But yeah, if you want to just let me know what's going on that'd be great all right so before founding the anthroposophical society as we know it today back when steiner was a member of the theosophical society and the president of the german branch of the theosophical society that was based in adyar at the time he ran in what was called an esoteric circle or an inner inner class with students and pupils that he would give deep, deeper teachings to. Around 1905, 1906, he applied to and was granted a Masonic Memphis Mizraim charter from a man named Theodore Roos or Royce. And this charter gave him permission basically because Steiner said that he was interested in continuing the esoteric traditions, esoteric continuity he called to open his own lodge, his own branch. And he took nothing from Theodore Roos or this Masonic group in the form of rituals, nothing in the form of teachings or anything that connected to the actual Memphis Mizraim work. He solely wanted permission to start his own lodge. When he was given that, that's one of the documents that's on the website, is a receipt for when he, he and his wife Marie paid 40 marks for membership into the Memphis Mizraim. He then wrote all of his own rituals. Um, he took a lot of the degrees that are similar in Freemasonic circles and in Memphis Mizraim circles and condensed them down basically into the framework of a nine degree system, first degree, second degree, up through nine. And the content of each of those degrees are rituals and monologues and dialogues that Steiner created himself. And they've been published in the collected works, uh, volume 265, known as Freemasonry and Ritual Work by Rudolf Steiner. And what these degrees are, are outer enactments like a play. They are initiations that symbolize physically the soul's progress toward enlightenment. So he said the reason he did this is to give uh, for those who need it, because not everyone needs it, but for those that it is helpful to, he gave a concrete action to tie into your life. So everything about your initiation, your studies is not just all abstract. You see it reflected in this play, in these movements, in the dialogue that happens, in the clothing that you wear, in the way that the lodge is set up. It all represents the soul's spiritual journey. So in the first degree, you are introduced to certain uh, elements and, and you have certain dialogues that take place that you listen to. And you have, you know, the lodge set up with the two pillars, like in the Masonic pillars, and there are altars and you're wearing certain clothing and you're giving base, you're given basically the first stage acted outwardly so you can perceive it and hear it and smell the incense in the air. You're given the first stage of the soul's advancement. 
and then it goes on through the second, third, fourth, fifth, up through the ninth degree, where it, according to Steiner's teachings, provided a trajectory of what we live in our spiritual life as we are reaching these higher stages of enlightenment and awareness. So not everyone, you know, obviously is in need of that. Steiner specifically said everyone didn't need it. But for those that it's helpful to, it's there. And I know for me personally, it helped me uh, recognize events in my life because the true initiation is your life, your experiences that you go through. But these are not always articulated to yourself in your own mind to understand how they relate to your spiritual path. So I had, you know, pivotal moments in life that always had this rather ambiguous power about them where I knew they were significant, but yet couldn't place them clearly in the puzzle of my spiritual journey. When I experienced the, the rituals of Steiner through the various degrees, what they call the blue degrees, first, second, third degree, I was able to have these aha moments, these eureka moments where a certain phrase was said or a certain symbolical presentation was given that suddenly put into perspective some of the events of my life where I was able to identify and say, okay, now this is what that meant. This is what's happening here. This is the struggle that we're going through. So it provided me that framework, that, that, that anchor to something that I could study, I could meditate on, that I could see acted out around me to overlay onto that initiatic journey, that inner journey. So Steiner's rituals are to the spiritual progress, the same thing that laboratory alchemy is to inner alchemy. It is a physical reflection of what's happening inside of you as you advance. Thank you, Richard. Are there any questions anyone has and or any thoughts about uh, what we've shared today or final words? I'd like to thank everyone well, I just for want coming. To say, huh? Go ahead. Thanks. I just want to say thanks, uh, Richard, for that. That was very um, useful, helpful. My pleasure. I'm amazed that so many people actually showed up participated with genuine interest and uh, sincerity. And I'm very, great, very grateful for that to everyone that's here. Thank you very much. Well, you know, we really want to just, as we did our opening, we really want to close this sacred space in a reverent way, you know, to really acknowledge that we've, we've brought some, some goodwill here into, into this, uh, this medium. And we, we can start by really just acknowledging each other, right? You know, thank you. Thank you for, for being here in this upper room for, you know, taking the time to, to show up, right? And we want to thank all of the elemental forces, right? Those things that we, that we passed on to each other and everything that's so beautiful and blooming all around us and all of the, the spirit that is behind that. And yeah, let's give a nod to to our ancestors and you know all those that are aligned with love and light and and that offer us guidance from across the threshold, right? And and we can't forget this ever present help of the spiritual world. And so so let's let's release the energies that that we've raised here today that that we can serve to to foster the the healing spirit in all worlds. You know, the healing spirit is another name for the Holy Spirit, right? So when we officially close this, this social sphere here, you know, let's also like really consciously ground ourselves, right? Lisa really helped us to, to feel that grounding by looking around at our surroundings. But yeah, so we can really take our the gifts that, that have been infused with the, the divine, you know, we can take them back out into our lives because like Richard said, it's about the initiation is about what we live, right? And what, what is holy is whole, 
right? So go ahead and, and wriggle your fingers and toes and just, you know, feel your body. And maybe you're going to go outside and walk barefoot in the garden or something, right? And, and enjoy the fruits of nature while remembering that the, the Whitson Festival is, you know, it's not just bestowed on us by nature. It, it really has to be uncovered out of the innermost reaches of our soul. And yeah, this is this is our work. This is the great work to know thyself, right? And they, these festivals really help us to do that. It's it, it gives us these milestones to stand on, and and Pentecost is a festival of the future, right? Because the Holy Spirit really it's it's like our higher self, and it still kind of hovers around us until we can ground that spark into a, a balanced, practical unselfish wholeness so you know even sometimes when we're out there we think we're kind of just doing it alone but but we're not you know we we know that we that we're actually part of this great wholeness that we are enacting a festival of community that that arises through the harm harmonizing of all of our higher selves right so we're we, we're you know we're all on a quest to bring the the Christ impulse of love in freedom to bear by uniting in the, the Sophianic wisdom. And there we grow wings. So thank you again for being here. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put, we're going to put the recording up and uh, I will share the, the words that we, that we uh, shared with you today. So if you want to read them and uh also, any other upcoming events will be put on our social media page as well as our website. So if you're ever curious and want to participate in anything else that may come up, just kind of keep an eye on the website or the social media pages. Hazel has several. Uh, there's a Mystica Americana Facebook group as well. But if you're not part of that, you can just go to AmericanMizRam.com and there will be an events page. Sometimes we'll have open discussions on the spiritual path. Other times we'll do presentations like this where we can all participate. Sometimes, you know, there's no telling what we may come up with. And we just want to get out there and allow people to participate, to have a bond, a friendship, you know, a working friendship to come together in a community, a spiritual community and, and share what we can. So thank you all very much for being here. Blessings. And tomorrow's Whitsunday, right? Indeed. Yeah. Nice to Bye -bye. see you. Peace. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Bye. Have Feel a free good day. to Bye -bye. say goodbye if you like. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye, Zachariah. Bye. 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 B